Alright, so you tell me how I'm supposed to do a mosh dance when it's just me. I did invite some other people and uh, that request was not well received. So let's look at an actual data set that has some logged values called the salary data set. Now, when I tried to run this at first, I got an error and I figured out it's because the names of my columns are funny. It's engineer salary. That's supposed to be one thing. And so I tried deleting this to make it just one word and resaving it in the file. And finally, I just decided it was way too much work. Plus, these are huge names, engineer salary. I don't want to type that out every time. So instead, I said, don't read in the header and skip that first line. So this gives me a data set that does have the right numbers. I had to go back and check. Are these the right numbers? Yes, they are. But now my column names are all messed up. So I went through what's it supposed to be the engineer hours and the engineer salary and the uh, salesperson's hours and salaries, the politicians and the teachers hours and salary. So I have to remember what my acronyms are used for, but that's going to save me a little bit of typing. Now our goal here is going to be to find a relationship between the salaries and the hours worked so that we can go to the engineers, for example, and say, if you work more hours, here's what you expect should happen to your salary. So let's look at a plot. It appears that for an engineer, if you work more hours, you should get paid more. Well, that makes sense. The question is, should it be logged? And looking at this, I don't see a strong need for a log here. So if I go ahead and just do a linear fit, and then I look at those residuals, they look all terribly squished like I can't even see. Oh, there we go. Um, that actually looks really good. It follows QQ line plot fine. I don't see evidence here saying we need a log. Yes, there's a data point that's a little further out than the others, but not super extreme. I can't even see the red dashed line saying that there's something with high level. So it looks like we're starting off with just the basic linear model, stuff that wasn't logged. Just because this chapter is about logging, it doesn't mean that you should blindly log everything. And in this case, I don't know what we would want to log, but let's try it. I'm gonna redo the same code, except let's look at the plot of log salary versus log hours. I don't, I don't know that I see a whole lot of difference. Let's look at my fit. Does it look like I'm getting better results here? Actually, maybe slightly worse. I'm seeing a little bit of curve here. Otherwise, I don't know. I don't see that there's any great. So I'm going to say that logging model really isn't justified. Let's put back in that linear model. This had no logs in it. And now I'm going to look at a summary. And where's my slope? It's 1.07. So for every extra hour that an engineer works, they should expect 1.07 higher salary. I think this is in thousands per year. It's made up data. Yeah, let's say it's thousands. So you would expect an extra 1,070, I guess is what it would be per year. And now an engineer can take this and say, okay, if I work a little harder, here's how much of a pay raise I think I'm worth. Looking at salespeople. Here's the plot for salespeople. As a salesperson works more hours, maybe you can expect that they should get more pay. It, it's a little bit subtle. Do we see that there tends to be more data flying off in some direction? I would say yes in the Y direction, right? This is for salary for the salespeople. So it looks to me like maybe a logging of Y would take care of that. Also, you might notice there's a bit of a fan shape. It's wider here than it was over on this side. So I'm thinking that if I log Y right here, I'll get a better picture. The survey says, ooh, that does look better. I like the way that looks for linear regression much more than what I had before. Now, let's say we didn't do a log model. Right here is the linear model. What would we see? See how these residuals seem to follow a curve that they're not uniform. They seem to try to have more residuals in the upper y direction, whereas this lower y direction is cut off. See the fan shape along with how there's high residuals here? Certainly something's wrong with the QQ plot towards the end as if there was some skew going on. Several subtle clues that a log might help this model. If I try doing the same thing with a log, what do my residuals look like? Lots better, lots smoother, even that fan shape has disappeared, my QQ plot is fixed, everything is now looking much improved. So I'm going to say a log is helpful. Now, can I interpret this output? That number right there is the number I need. In fact, I'm going to steal it so that I don't have to keep looking down there. How do I interpret this? 
Well, x was not logged. So I can say as x increase, let, let's put this in context. About as a salesperson works more hours, how much is their pay going to increase? Well, I use just basic logs. So that by default in R is a log base E. So if I want E to a power, I'm going to say EXP. That's the way the R does E. 0 0.035655. And there's what I get. Now, that is a multiplicative effect on Y. So I can say it increases by 3% per hour. That means a salesperson who is working very few hours, if they work an extra hour, then it's not a whole lot of pay increase. But a salesperson who's putting in a massive amount of hours, if they put in just a little bit more, they get a decent pay increase. Well, that would be meaningful to a salesperson. The ones who are killing themselves are gonna say, you know what, if I can push just a little bit more, I can get a good chunk of money. The ones who are working very little are gonna say, gosh, is it worth it? Unless I want to work enough to get to those higher values. So think to yourself, what is your salary? What is 3% of that? Would you work an extra hour per week if you got that bump in your salary? Well, it depends on how much you're making. Now let's switch our attention to the politicians. Here's what it looks like. We have really high salaries for low amounts of hours, and we have really high amounts of hours with really low salary. That, that does not look happy to politicians. It explains why politicians are so since we see exploding in the y direction and we see this exploding in the x direction, a log on both would make sense and seem reasonable. And that's the plot you get after you log both. Is there an effect here? Let's try a linear model this data. Let's see what our residuals look like. Oh, those are kind of messed up residuals. This looks bad. It looks like it needs an extra log. If you look at the log log model, there's what the residuals are doing. Okay, yeah, that's better. QQ plots improved. Residuals have maybe improved. Um, it still looks like we've got some really far outliers, like maybe there was another log needed. We should log the log. No, let's not go there. But I think we can all agree this is at least better than what we had before. And if we run our summary, right there is the part I want you to notice. When I teach this in class, we sit here and play with the data for a while until somebody finally notices the big p-value, and it's like, hold on, I don't think that there's actually any relationship between hours and salary, which is kind of funny because we're talking about politicians here. That was actually not on purpose. I created this data set thinking that it would be a good log-log example, and it kind of didn't seem to turn out that way. But rather than change it, I've left it in this data set because it helps illustrate that sometimes logging doesn't fix everything. We can't find a relationship because it appears that there's not a relationship, which explains the hours politicians work. My apologies to all the politicians who are watching this video, but come on, you're kind of an easy target to make fun of. So let's look at teacher salaries. And somehow I seem to be stuck on small size plots. It appears that as a teacher works more hours, their salary goes up. Okay, can you tell that we're gonna need a log? Yes, which way is it exploding? It seems to be exploding out in the x direction. Let's pretend you didn't notice. If you ran the linear model and then looked at your residuals, would we see a problem? We'd see these big outliers here, but we wouldn't necessarily see a problem in the QQ plot, just these big outliers. And I guess looking at this last plot, you would see it appears to be curved. If I draw my regression line on it, does that line follow the data? Yeah, sort of, but I think a log would maybe fit it a little better. And it looks like hours is the one that needs to be logged because these far outliers are sticking out in the hours direction. So with a log, here's what it looks like. A little better, right? I mean, I'm seeing that it looks more straight, less curvy, and the variance seems to be nice and constant. So let's try logging teacher's hours and looking at those residuals. Do these look better than what we had before? Mm, it's subtle, hard to tell. Here, I'll make it so we can go back and forth. Here's without the or here's with the log and without. With, without. So they were clumped down and they kind of got spread out a little bit more, which is good. Um, looking at those leverages, see without, you could barely see the red dashed lines, whereas with, those disappear. Is that enough to say, I don't know, if this was a homework assignment, I think I could understand a student justifying either way, with the log or without. 
In this case, I'm going to say let's put the log in, partly because I want a video that illustrates how to do it, and partly because that very first plot did look like it kind of had a curve. This plot right here, which I seem to be stuck on the one by one, but that looked like maybe a curve would be helpful. So let's look at my summary, and there is my slope. Yes, it's significant. Can I interpret? Well, I'm going to take that slope times the log, which is still base e, because that's what I used in my regression, 1.02. Why 0.02? Because I want a sentence that says, if a teacher works 2% harder. I just picked 2% because I think that might be something you could go to a teacher and say, if you could work 2% harder, somebody else might want to use 1%. And if that's you, that's great. Go ahead and get this code and change it to 1% if that's what you want. You could even do 5% or 10%. Please don't ask a teacher to double their workload. That's just not reasonable. 0.47, so that's in thousands per year, uh, so $474.5 more per year, year, year. So imagine telling a teacher, if you work 2% harder, you'll get an extra 500 bucks per year, is that worth it? Well, if a teacher is working very little, then working 2% harder, that's, that's not hard, and you get a decent incline. But if a teacher is already working massive amounts of hours, and you tell them work 2% harder, that's a big jump in workload for only $500. So this is a situation where teachers who aren't doing much would say, oh yeah, it's worth it. But teachers who are working really hard would say, yeah, that's not worth it for me. Which is why this graph shows there's not a lot of teachers working those massive amounts of hours. So there's four different models going through different logs. Um, the log log model didn't exactly work, so let's do a new video and we'll look at a different data set that does have a log log situation.